Hey guys, today I am going to talk about Alpha Investments and financial advice like mystery boxes, the 6.9 mystery box. I heard that he made a video about it. I haven't watched the video, but maybe we'll do a live stream. My point is when you listen to people for financial advice on alternative investments, uh, often they're going to give advice to a lot of people and they probably don't even know you exist. You've never talked to them, you've never emailed them, you've never chatted with them, you never made a phone call with them, and obviously you've never seen them in person. Yet they're saying, oh, Sealed is a good investment, Pokemon Sealed is a great investment, this is a great investment, and yeah, it is a very vague, specific piece of advice, but at the end of the day, everyone has a different financial issue, and. Uh, the issue today that we're facing is a lot of people, even if sealed is a good investment, it doesn't have the volume or the quick exit people need. We see this a lot, I see this a lot in Rolex watches where a lot of people thought it was a very safe investment and now they're just being hammered by the price. When you have an asset that is going down in price, it's really hard to sell it because you're taking a percent, I mean, in your mind, you think this is a $10,000 watch, you're gonna to have to take a haircut on it uh, to move it fast. And that's particularly the problem. So maybe if you can hold something for 10 years, maybe Alpha Investments right, this seal box will be okay. But the problem is the majority of people cannot hold for 10 years and that gets eaten up by people like Alpha Investment for pennies on the dollar. There's that video where one of his uh, patrons, one of his fans, one of his Uber fans has to sell all his booster boxes to Alpha Investment for pennies. And Alpha Investment at that time, he was newer, so he actually told you what prices he was buying them at, and it was 40%, 30%. But he needed to move them. So he didn't really have any leverage or negotiation skills, and they, they were pretty fine boxes. So in time, had the guy held the box for another five years, he would be good. I mean, it was original Innistrad, it was Dark Ascension, it was Averson Restored. It was some of the better boxes that we would consider today as, you know, pretty good mid-tier boxes that you would have in your collection. But he couldn't hold. He needed the money and he sold. And when people, and here's, the, here's kind of the disastrous thing when people need money the most starting a recession or when they lose your job it's because other people have lost their jobs so it is very likely that in the time of need when you need to sell your collection that you probably are selling it in a down market and other people are also looking to sell their collections in a down market so advice that could be really good, gen generic advice, hey, buy a bunch of boxes, hold on to it for 10 years, and it'll probably go up in price. Number one, does it beat inflation? I would say no. And number two, does it take space? I would say yes, and unless you have an infinite warehouse like Rudy Chan does, you will eventually run out of space, and the space will be more valuable to you, and it might already be more valuable to you, if you live in New York City or Hong Kong, something it's not like you can just buy pallets, as uh, Alpha Investment says, and just keep it in your home. You know, you're paying per square foot in those areas, and and you know that because that's one of the ways that they rent it to you. They go, oh, this is cost this much per square foot per month. So good advice, which might on its face seem very good, um, it, because it's generic and not tailored towards you, could be very bad. And that's what we're finding out right now. Only, it's kind of like FTX or Bernie Madoff, only when people run, get need money, and they're like, hey, you know, I put in $10,000 in FTX, FTX says I have $20,000, okay, let me take out 20000 Oh, FTX, no, no, we don't have any, no, no money for you. Oh, is this a scam? Yep, scam. Same with Bernie Madoff, right? The problem isn't when people put money in. <laughs> you know, people are euphoric, people are happy. The problem is when people try to take the money out. And that's not just uh, an issue for Ponzi schemes, it's an issue for banks, legitimate banks, it's an issue for everybody. And it is an issue for a lot of people. When you are most desperate to sell, it is likely to correspond when the market is the lowest for that product or that asset. Because that's when most people are selling. 
So I think when you give financial advice, it does have to be tailored that you cannot give generic advice for people because not everyone is in the same financial situation. Not everyone is a multimillionaire like Alpha Investments is. Not everyone has an infinite basement where they can store all their product, like a, you know, a dimension of product. And uh, you have to you have to look at this from a very honest perspective and say, okay, you know, what is you have to look at you have to do your own research. You have to buy what you want to buy, not what someone else tells you to buy. And you gotta look at it from okay, if it goes to zero, am I still going to enjoy this hobby? If the answer is no, stop buying whatever you're buying because you're not enjoying it. You're trying to flip it for money. And as we know, uh, these things have are very difficult to sell. Um, nobody tells you this, but I'm going to tell you this right now. The volume on a lot of these collectible items is near zero. Maybe one or two boxes get sold a day. There are product the older the product you go the less the volume which makes sense but at some point the volume is one box a month among all sellers among 20,000 30,000 40,000 different people selling on TCG player and and other places you know the volume is such so low that you're not going to be able to you, you can buy it really fast you're not going to have an issue buying it, trust me. There are plenty of people who have these boxes that Rudy Chan sold to them that are willing to sell for whatever. I mean, they just don't wanna lose money. But, good luck selling them because the volume on these products, and it makes sense, the, the new product is Dominary Remastered is way better than any of these products, War of the Spark, original Dominaria, because they have basically all the good cards in Dominaria plus like more. So like, why would you buy, like if you were just looking for the potential card power, the Dominaria Remastered Collector's Edition for 300 is a hell lot better than Dominaria for 300 or 200, whatever it is, in terms of what you can pull. You open a box of Dominaria, you open a box of War Spark, you'd be lucky to break even, with, you'd be lucky to get $20 buy list. That's the honest truth that these older boxes, once open, have almost zero value in them. There's almost no hits that you can get from them to justify opening them. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. I think that when you give financial information, it should be tailored towards the individual and their financial situation. Do they have a stable job? Do they have extra money? Do they have the ability to slowly sell on eBay? Do they even have an eBay account? Do they know how to mail stuff? Do they know how to detect fraud? They, I mean, the, the act of selling is insanely underrepresented in the Magic the Gathering community. Everyone just assumes that because you bought it easy, that you could sell it easy. No, man, it is probably a hundred times harder to sell a Magic box uh, sealed than it is to buy one. Because everyone and their grandmother, it, it's a fungible item. Meaning that there's no difference if you buy from me or you buy from Alpha Investments or you buy from Amazon. It should be the same item. And because it's a fungible item, then people really only really look at price. Now they do look at customer service and reviews and so on, but the majority, 95% of Magic players only want the cheapest box, even if it comes from Amazon. Hi guys.